Hi, and welcome to JD's Longbox. I'm your host, JD. For this 60 second review, we're taking a look at The Savage Sword of Conan No. 1, published in 2024 by Titan Comics along with Heroic Signatures. Conan was created by Robert E. Howard. Several writers and artists contributed to the various entries in this anthology magazine, including John Arcudi and Max von Fafner, Jim Zub and Joe Jusco, Patch Zitcher, Jeffrey Shanks, and Roy Thomas. Marking the 50-year anniversary of the original publication of Savage Sword of Conan by Curtis Magazines and Marvel Comics, this relaunch of the magazine by Titan Comics and Heroic Signatures is a throwback to the 1970s era. Printed in black and white on pulpy paper, in a magazine format including two full-length comic stories, one featuring the title character Conan, and one featuring Robert E. Howard's earlier creation, Solomon Kane, as well as a prose short story of Conan, and an essay describing Howard's early writing career and the fictional career of Solomon King, and his impact on the pulp and literary world that would go on to shape the genre of sword and sorcery. The first story sees Conan serving as a general to an unreliable prince determined to reclaim his throne. Without any subverting expectations or trying to outsmart the audience, the twists and turns brought a gleeful surprise with every page turn. Conan slashes his way through the bad guys and monsters and he gets the girl. The artwork is fantastic, though the painterly shading makes me really wish this was printed in color to show off its full splendor. It's almost a disservice to be printed on such pulpy paper. The following short story is a surprise for a comics magazine. Two full pages of prose from the point of view of a captain tasked with escorting a young woman to a ritual sacrifice. Little does he know that waiting for him in the sandstorm is the savage Sumerian. Conan has been sent to her rescue. It's reminiscent of John Rambo taking out the unsuspecting Soviet Spetsnaz one by one in First Blood Part 2. The final comic story opens in a rainy Welsh village on All Hallows' Eve, or as we now call it, Halloween. Sheep are slaughtered, a shepherd goes missing, and a traveling stranger by the name of Solomon Kane is about to find himself on a monster hunt. The story is much more plodding, heavy in atmosphere and in tone, but it sets up a more relatable world filled with mistrust, faith, doubt, and monsters in the night. The art is far better suited to the black and white format with its clean outlines, black shapes, and gray washes. The writing gets a 9.5. The pencils gets a 9. And the inks gets a 9. This adds up to a 92%. I hope you liked this 60 second review. Be sure to like and subscribe and then check out some of my other videos. If you're looking for brutal hardcore action from another savage barbarian, be sure to check out my review of Keanu Reeves' Berserker. And if you're interested in black and white gothic revenge, then check out my review of James O'Barr's The Crow. Until next time, I'm JD, and this box is closed.